start module 2 which brings us to a typical supervised machine learning setup okay this is a very important module please pay attention. So, now we have a sigmoid neuron we have taken care of the fact that the perceptron was a very harsh function. So, we have a smooth function. So, things are fine. Now, what next where do we go from here what is my next topic going to be yes a lot of you are giving the right answers we need to learn these weights it does not help just to define the function this function depends on certain weights and now I need to give you an algorithm which will help you to learn these weights. Now, remember when I talked about perceptrons before giving you an algorithm what did I revisit what did I talk about the error surfaces right and then I had motivated from there that our goal is to find a set of weights which give us close to which give us 0 error in that case right or in general uh, gen, uh, speaking generally they should give us uh, minimum error right they should help us to minimize the error right. So, I need to set up that uh, a similar story here. So, we will again revisit the concept of error. So, now in the case of perceptron I had shown you this figure which there were this data is not linearly separable which is obvious and I had told you that perceptron cannot handle this data. But what do I mean by it cannot handle this data it cannot give 0 error right. But what would happen if I run the perceptron algorithm on this take a guess what does the perceptron algorithm do fine and I could convergence is my condition right I could make that condition a bit loose. What is a valid convergence condition that you would lose here, uh, use here till almost all my points are separated properly right. So, instead of aiming for 100 percent separation I could have a threshold which says as long as 90 percent of the points are separated I am fine with it that looks like a reasonable thing to do right. So, now if I run the perceptron algorithm with that condition what do you think will I get as the decision boundary everyone has a picture in mind ok let us see does this match what you had in mind roughly of course there are many things possible, but it will basically pass through this. Now, what is happening here what is the problem there are 3 blue points which are wrongly classified and 3 red points which are wrongly classified, but in most real world applications we will find that this line is not too bad we could live with this error right this is probably 3 out of 30 on both sides which is roughly 10 percent error unless you are using it in some mission critical applications or in healthcare where it is a life and death situation or something in most cases you could live with this right. So, if you are trying to predict whether people will vote for a particular party if you make this kind of error it would be largely ok unless it is a very close election, but largely it would be ok right. So, we could live with this kind of errors in most cases. So, from now on we are not going to be too optimistic and we are going to say that there would be some error, but my job is to find the weights such that my error is minimized ok. I want the minimum possible error that I could get is that fine ok. So, again whatever weights we want to learn we are going to be driven by some error function and we would want to minimize that error function ok. So, this brings us to a typical machine learning setup which has the following components. So, this perhaps is the most important slide in the course and I will say this at least for 100 other slides in the course, but at least for now this is the most important ok. So, you are given some data x i y i and you are given n such elements right. So, let me just elaborate on this and give me I will give you some instances of this let me give you some instances of this right. So, one thing which I already told you was this. So, this is my x and this is my y. So, one example which I gave was about movies right. So, this was genre actor and critics rating and so on right this is one instantiation of this problem. I could also give you another instantiation which was I just told you oil right. So, this is how much oil can I get and here my factors were salinity uh, density and so on right there were many other factors ok. So, this was my x again x belongs to r n where n is some number integer and another example could be say fraud detection. So, I, I have a customer I am a bank I have a customer who has bought some credit card and I want to predict whether he or she would commit a fraud right and I would look at factors like what is his occupation right maybe salary maybe family size and so on right there could be various factors which I could look at right. So, here again this becomes an x ok and you could think of various such examples right where you are given an x and you are given a y ok. So, this is the data that you have now what is machine learning then where does machine learning fit into this right. So, we know that there is some relation which exists between y and x in each of these cases 
all of us are convinced that there is some relation, right? So whether a person would commit a fraud would depend on these factors. It's reasonable to assume that. It's not a very wild assumption, right? Whether you would find oil at a location would depend on some of these factors, right? It's related. And similarly for the movie case, right? So there exists some true relation between x and y such that if I plug this value of x into the relation, it would give me the value of y. There exists a true relation. This true relation could be governed by various things, right? It could be governed by physical laws, example in the oil mining case. It could be even governed by biological laws, again the marine life in that uh, location and so on. It could be uh, governed by economic laws. It could be covered by psychology, right? We don't know why a person cheats, what is his function that he is using when he cheats and so on, right? So these could depend on various factors, but we all agree that some function exists, hence we get these values for this particular input, right? For every input we get a certain value. So there is some function which takes us from the input to the output. We don't know what this function is, right? We never know in practice. It's a very, very complex function is all that we know. We don't know this exact function. If we knew this exact function, then there's no problem to solve, right? We just use that function and you can predict how much oil and all of us can become billionaires, right? So that is not the case, right? We don't know what this function is. So then what do we do in machine learning? We make an assumption, okay? We make an assumption that there is some function which takes x to y and this function is governed by some parameters, right? And this is our approximation of how the real world works. And now under this assumption, we want to predict the parameters of this model given the data, okay? Now let's take a very simple case where we could assume that y is equal to wx plus b. I'm taking this in the uh, scalar single dimensional case, right? Now, how would you estimate the values of w and b? Oh, come on. If I give you two data points, you can estimate the value or should I write it? That would jog your memory, right? This is how we all learn, right? So m and c, you can estimate if I give you two data points, right? So that's the simplest case. Now we'll make similar assumptions, but more complex functions. And just as we could estimate M and C from the data, we would expect to estimate W's also from the data, okay? So that's what the machine learning setup is. So let's see. So the model, when we talk about a machine learning model, it's our approximation of the relation between X and Y. And we are free to make any such approximation, right? So I could say that this is what I think is the relation between Y and x and which is governed by some parameters w. Do you know what is this function? Have you seen this before? Oh, no, not sigmoid. Okay, which model is this? Logistic regression, right? Okay, but I could also have made a different assumption. I could have made this assumption. What do I get? Linear regression. Mm, okay. Uh, please note that this error on the slide here. Okay. And I could make some other assumption. I could assume that y is actually a quadratic function of x, right? And I'm free to make any assumptions. The only thing I need to ensure is there's some parameter involved. What is wrong with making this assumption? If this is valid, is this also valid? If not, why? There are no parameters. So, no, not for any x we'll get, we'll, it will depend, still depend on the value of x, right? If I plug in different values of x, I'll still get a different output. There is nothing to learn. What do I do with all the data that I have, right? There is absolutely nothing I can use it to learn. I have just said that y is equal to 1 over e, 1 plus e raised to minus x. I can ignore all the data that you had given me. Whenever you give me a new x, I'll just plug it into this formula and tell you the answer, right? And that's bound to be wrong because I have not adjusted this formula. Now, once I put in the w's, it gives me this degree of freedom where I can now adjust the formula. I can learn the w's in such a way that my predicted y's are very close to the actual y's, right? So that's why we need, always need a parametric form, right? Of course, there is non-parametric learning also, but I'm just saying in this supervised setup, we are thinking of models where you have parameters, okay? Okay, so you have the data, you have the model. The model always has some parameters. In all of the above cases, w is a parameter, right? Either the small w, which is a vector, or the capital W, which is a matrix. So notice that this is a matrix. This is 1 cross n, n cross n, and n cross 1, right? Fine? 
Now, how do we learn these parameters? That's the question that we need to answer, right? How do we learn these parameters? We are convinced about two things that we never know the true function. So, we come up with an approximate function and we have to insert some parameters in that function. So far, good. Now, I have to be able to learn these parameters, right? Now, for learning these parameters, we have something known as an learning algorithm. So, did you see any learning algorithm so far? Perceptron learning algorithm, right? So, you already saw the perceptron learning algorithm and it was able to learn the weights for a perceptron. There are various such algorithms. Today, we are going to learn one such algorithm which is gradient descent, okay? Now, any kind of learning, what is it driven by? Learning is driven by errors, objective function, right? So, the analogy which I like to give is, suppose you are trying to learn trigonometry, right? You have a chapter, that's your training data. The chapter has a lot of formulae, that's your training data. Now, what's your objective? There are two objectives actually, I'll tell you the easy objective. The training time objective is that, once you read through the chapter a few times, at least whatever formulae are given in the chapter, you should be able to produce the correct output for them, right? So, if I ask you what is sin square theta plus cos square theta, you should be able to answer that, right? You should be able to give me the correct answer, right? So, in other words, you're trying to minimize the error on the training data, right? Whatever training data you have, which is the chapter content, you want to make zero errors in anything which is given in the chapter. That's your training error. Of course, there's also something as known as a test error. Because after you have learned the chapter, I'll give you an independent set of exercises, which might contain questions which you had not seen in the textbook earlier, right? So, you would have seen sin square theta plus cos square theta, but now I could ask you some other formula, which you should be able to give me answers if you have learned properly, right? So, now, right now, we're just talking about the training error. That means getting all the formula in the chapter correctly, and our chapter is actually the training data which is given to you. This is what we are reading. So, this is always going to be driven by an objective function and our goal is just as we wanted to minimize the errors that we make on the formulae given in the chapter, we want to minimize the errors on the training data. Is this setup absolutely clear to everyone? Anyone who does not understand this has any doubts? See, this is something, this is the same framework that we'll use again in lecture 18, 19, 20 and so on to explain some more complex models, right? So, you have to absolutely make sure that you understand this. Right? It's not very difficult, but just make sure you understand this. Okay, fine. So, let's concretize this a bit more and we'll consider our movie example and try to fit that into this framework. So, what's our training data there? We are given movie comma lies disc, like this like. And when I say movie, I am just using a shortcut. It's actually all the details of the movie, right? Genre, actor, director, critics rating and so on. That's our input. And our output is the like dislike value. What is the model that I chose? What is the model that I chose? I don't know what's my true relation between when I like a movie or not, but I made this approximation that this is how y depends on x, and I made sure I introduced some parameters there. I could have chosen some other functions also, but I chose this, right? Now the parameter is w. This should be a bold w. The learning algorithm that we are going to use is gradient descent, which we'll be seeing soon. And what's an objective function here? Can you tell me a formula? So we have been talking about it in terms of English, that I should be able to get predictions which are as close to the true prediction. Or can you put it into a formula? Yi minus Yi hat, where hat is the prediction, right? This is the prediction. So that's Yi minus Yi hat, that should be minimized, is that fine? whole square of that. So, why do you square it? So, that's correct. So, for all the training points and training points, I want to minimize the square difference between yi, the true prediction and the prediction, uh, sorry, the true value and the predicted value. Is that fine? And why do I use squares? Differentiable is one. The other thing? The positive errors and the negative errors should not cancel, right? So, it would be happen that on some movies, I make a positive error of 0.5, right? That means the actual uh, label should have been 0.5 and I gave 1. On some movies, I make a negative error of 0.5 and these would cancel each other and I'll get the false impression that I'm making zero errors. But once I square the values, the negative values also become positive. So, this cannot happen, right? So, that's why we always use the squared error function and also this is differentiable, which is more important, right? Okay. Now, the learning algorithm should try to minimize this particular quantity, okay? So, this is a typical machine learning setup. Almost any supervised learning problem that you see, you could cast it in this framework, change the 
y hat function appropriately, change the parameters appropriately, maybe use a different learning algorithm depending on the problem that you are trying to tackle and you should be able to fit it into the same frame. Is that fine? Okay. At least for this course, everything that we do, we will largely be able to fit it into this framework. Okay. Fine. So that's where we end uh, this module. Mm -hmm.